Uh, so what I have here is um, just Grafana. Um, because Zerto has tried to be API first for, I don't know, the better part of a decade, um, we, we can get a lot of really cool data out of the system. Um, you can you could literally pretty much rebuild Zerto Analytics just from our API. Uh, so what I've done here is taking the API data from our 9.7 algorithm uh, and basically graphing it, right? So there, there's, three, um, there's three lines here, the, the total number of logical blocks. Let me turn off uh, refresh here. Uh, the total number of logical blocks is green. Um, and actually, I need to change one. Uh, we can do it later. Anyway, uh, basically, we have three lines. We have the amount of encrypted data, very low, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty low because, obviously, we hope nobody's getting encrypted with ransomware. Uh, and then the unencrypted logical blocks, obviously, much higher. And then the total is just simply the, the, combined, the combined of the two. Um, what... What we've been able to then do is basically make trends, right? Uh, you can actually see this data uh, on a per VM basis. Uh, this customer here, obviously, a lot of different VMs. Uh, but the idea is, is that once we start to see an anomaly, it'll probably look more like this green line up here, right? The, the total amount of encrypted traffic will be much higher than normal. Uh, it's been surprising that a lot of VMs uh, will spike encrypted traffic even if the application isn't meant to be encrypted. Uh, but basically, for the most part, most VMs are are pretty low uh, in terms of rates of encryption. There are some workloads that obviously aren't. Uh, from what we've seen, like if you have a, if you have a system that's using uh, like a Linux file system like Luke's or uh, Windows BitLocker or something like that, 100% of the traffic is going to be encrypted. Zerto's probably not going to be able to find an anomaly in that because it's it's already encrypted to us. Um, but for most workloads these days, uh, they're not encrypted in the guest yet, at least from what we've seen from our customers. Uh, and therefore, we can, we can basically use our API uh, or our write filter to analyze that data. And for those ones, actually, Justin, would it not detect the second layer encryption on the existing blocks? Because you're still, you're still seeing it at the, at the block layer. We see it at the block layer. Uh, and Basically, the profile should indicate that it was encrypted before, but at least that's an A state. And it well, but we when it's when it's doubly encrypted, you'll it should still change. Anyway, sorry, I'm I'm overthinking it. You're you're overthinking it maybe a little bit, but uh, you could be right. Anyway, the the idea is is that Zerto just sees SCSI blocks, right? Right. So what our algorithms are looking for is basically how anomalous that uh, data looks. Is it compressed or is it encrypted? And um, this is technically like a, a 1.5 version of our algorithms. Um, so we're obviously going to refine them over time and try to get better and better. Um, and at some point we may be able to, to detect file system layer versus in guest layer versus bad layer, right? Uh, the evil switch that, uh, that, uh, he was talking about earlier. Um, but right. Pretty right. actual location where things occur. What? Where is the algorithmic detection and like updates of the like heuristic sources from NIST coming from? And where is the streaming data being stored? Like, do you have a local influx? We, we, don't, we don't store any data. So that's, uh, that's one thing to keep in mind, right? We, meaning Zerto, uh, tries to ship data as quickly as possible. We don't want to hold it, right? Write rates are too high to hold on to data very long. Uh, so we're basically getting uh, some metadata about the SCSI blocks, holding them for a very, very small amount of time, and then making a determination based on, you know, a few blocks, right? So we can increase or decrease the size of that block window. Uh, but the idea is, is that we don't want to hold that data any longer than we have to. Uh, and the, the reason is, is because we just wanted the memory in our VRAs to do that, right? We would have to have gigabytes and gigabytes of memory. Um, so we hold on to it for a very short amount of time. We run the two algorithms against the, the data, and then basically we send those stats into ZVM. Uh, once ZVM uh, you know, says, hey, we have enough to make a determination of you know, badness is happening, uh, then you'll see an alert in the console. That's when the tag checkpoints happen, things like that. Uh, but what we're also doing, and again, this is the, the 9.7 API. I'll show you the, the newer 10.0 API. 
Uh, but basically, here, here are where those stats come from, right? It's just simply logical blocks that are encrypted or unencrypted. And what we're hoping here is that not only can Zerto take advantage of this and, and start to do cool things with it, um, but, you know, like Chris said, we're, we're not looking to replace your standard security companies, right? Security is an onion, right? We're hoping to be one layer, hopefully add value to other products, um, and basically just, you know, provide a more real-time, you know, heads up of, hey, bad things are happening. You don't have to analyze backups from, like, last night or anything like that. Um, the the newer APIs in the 10.0, so what I've done is I've switched. I don't know if you can see the top of my screen, but I have a, a 9.7 DVM here and then a 10.0. And the 10.0 is going to provide a lot more APIs. So in 9.7, uh, we kind of hid it from customers. We wanted to try it out with a, with a few select customers, make sure everything was kind of working as we thought it would. Uh, in 10.0, it's generally available. It's on by default. Uh, and so what you're going to see is basically these three APIs. And this is a beta build, they're not in here, but there's another set of three APIs that actually show you the stats at both the, the volume VM and VPG level too. Uh, Spe so. Speaking of being on by default, what if the volume itself is encrypted? If it's what, sorry? If the volume itself is encrypted? Basically, Zerto. Like BitLocker or something like that. Right, so Zerto is gonna see all of that SCSI traffic as encrypted, uh, at least in this first release. Uh, we're hoping that at some point we refine the algorithms enough to tell the difference between BitLocker, Luke's, whatever, versus like, you know, some Python script doing bad things or, or whatever inside. Uh, but like I said, from what we've seen on most of the customers we tested with, um, they're not using too many encrypted file systems as a as a standard in normal virtual machines. But if they are, right, this isn't going to provide a lot of value. Right. Right. Okay. Um. So, oh, yeah. Just to follow on from that. So, as that standard becomes more mandated around the world mm -hmm. for things like BitLocker by default, I mean, and there are public sector organizations sure. around the world that are doing that. Yep. Plan to try and work on something that will detect the difference between normal encryption and malicious encryption? Our, our guys are, uh, let's put it this way, they, uh, the idea of nerding out on machine learning and improving algorithms is, uh, it gets their, their blood boiling and it, it, they want to do that, right? Uh, right now it's a matter of, you know, do we make it perfect or do we just, you know, make it better over time, right? Uh, we could wait and make it perfect, but going to be a lot of our customers that probably get ransomware and uh, so we want to get this out there as we see you know more security standards come into place we're going to obviously improve uh, same thing with VMware right I mean we're doing a lot of things just to make sure that you know we keep up with VMware obviously VMware is tightening things down just so that uh, you know attacks against VMDKs are less and less um, so we're we're spending a lot of time and effort to make sure that we constantly improve